So this video is a continuation of our previous tutorial on getting started with the new ChatGPT API. In the last video, we walked through how to create a basic chat loop with ChatGPT, both in Jupyter Notebooks, and then how to adapt that code into a slightly more interesting interactive Python Flask application. But there was a problem with our code. The longer the conversation went on, eventually we would hit the model's input token limit. This is because the ChatGPT model has no memory. So every time you send a message or a question, at the code level, you need to be providing the entire transcript of the conversation history. Without this transcript, there's no continuity from one question and answer pair to another. The model doesn't remember what you asked previously or even how it responded without you telling it. So the longer a conversation gets, the closer you get to the input token limit, which is currently 4,096 tokens. Once you hit that limit, you'll get an invalid request error that looks something like this. So to handle this scenario, we need to keep a running count of the tokens we are sending to the model. And once we reach the point where we're hitting invalid request errors, we then have to selectively remove question and answers from the chat history in order to successfully ask new questions. In this video, we'll demonstrate how to continually remove the oldest entries in the conversation history. This does, however, come at a cost. Anything we remove from the transcript that we send with the new questions means the model loses that context. This is part of why you see weird behavior with the ChatGPT-based chatbots the longer the conversation goes on. Once you start dropping part of the conversation history, it's going to have an impact on all future responses. Since the model doesn't know about those older questions and answers anymore, the overall conversation experience can start to degrade, especially if you ask a follow-up question that requires knowledge of a question that was asked at the beginning of the conversation. Okay, let's get started. So OpenAI provides a basic example on how to handle token counting in their cookbook, but what it kind of leaves as an exercise to the reader is how to actually integrate this into a chat GPT conversation loop. I tried two different ways of doing this. Let's walk through that now. So I'm gonna go through the code pretty quickly, but as always, if you look at the description for the video, I'll have a link to all the code so you can download it and play with it yourself. So to start off, this is kind of my modified version of OpenAI's token counting that they provide in their cookbook. It's their core code, but I've just kind of stripped out the parts that are unnecessary just so it's a little bit easier to follow for this example. If you're actually implementing this in your own application, I would go to the cookbook and use that as an example. It has some error handling and some additional functionality, but for me, I just want to have this as small and compressed as possible. You can see here, I was playing around with some different ideas. We've got some print statements in here just so I can kind of keep track of what's going on. Initially, what I tried doing was saying, once I'm getting to the point where I'm going to be hitting the token limit, I wanted to cut off the first half of the conversation. I didn't want to cut off index zero because in index zero is the system message. And so that's where we tell the model, this is how I want you to act. I want you to be a good, helpful chatbot. I want you to talk like a pirate thing, whatever you might want. And so we needed to add that back in. So essentially this is just a very efficient way of us grabbing half of our conversation history. So we're keeping the most recent half, dropping the older half then being able to do that any time that we're getting near that 4096 token limit. Let me show you this running really quick. So So you have our initial conversation history token count, which consists of our question, and in this case also our system message, where we instruct the model how we want it to act. The conversation length is how many items are currently in the conversation. So right now at index zero, we have the system message and at index one, we have this question. What is the airspeed velocity of an unladed swallow? Then we get our answer back from the model. And then here we get our post response token count, which is adding in, adding. So to this 30 here, adding in the tokens that make up our response. Let's ask another question. So you can see again, post response token count, conversation length. Here's some more information on the cast. Let 
and we're now at 366 tokens. So you can see it for this type of conversation with uh, we've got the max response capped at 250, it's going to take us a little bit of time before actually hitting that 4096 token limit. But for right now, this is kind of how we deal with it. And then I'll stop this and just to reiterate, let's go and add another here and just show. So the thing that we are always passing each time we make a call, we have messages and we're passing conversation. And let's just look at conversation right now so you can see that. So here is our entire conversation transcript so far. So this allows the model to have context of what we've asked previously, so it's able to more intelligently answer the questions in a more natural conversation way. But once we get to that token limit, then we're basically going to cut half of this out. We'll leave the system message behind and then have the other half of the conversation. So that's kind of how this first one works. This second one is a little bit cleaner, a little bit trimmed down. And so what's happening here is once we get to the point that we're near our token limit, I just start deleting whatever is in index one of the conversation history. And so the reason we have this in a while loop is we could run into a scenario where our new question is so long that simply deleting what's in index one of the conversation history isn't going to be enough. So this is just going to, as long as we are outside of our token limit, go and start trimming off one by one the oldest messages with the exception of the system message that's at index zero. So this is a little bit cleaner, a little bit easier to follow, but it's kind of the same principle. In this one, I've removed all of the print statements. So you're just getting back your answers. At this point, I kind of understood how it was working. I didn't, you can crank back the token limit and mess with the max response size if you want to force it to be able to kind of watch the process of it going and starting to remove the old conversation history. I then took this code and brought it into the Flask app that we demonstrated previously. So again, I'm having to define my kind of slimmed down version of OpenAI's counting tokens code, and then having pretty much everything that we had before right here, with kind of the noticeable exception of, in because of the fact that we're inside a function, I need to define this as a global in order for things to work. Initially, I didn't have this as global, and I was wondering why I was getting weird errors and things weren't working, and then I realized that was the problem. This will then give us our nice kind of flask app experience. And if you don't mind, know, Monty Python, Monty Python is an old British comedy, um, should be apparent. But. And it is funny because most of the time I'm seeing kind of some degree of hallucination or confabulation anytime it answers these questions. It doesn't quite, it, it has decent knowledge of the movie, but it doesn't quite answer the way as accurately as I would like. But one of the things also we can do is move over to here and let's add in a breakpoint right at the moment that we're taking user not there. Let's do on line 37 and we'll come back here and ask another question. And so with the breakpoint, we can then dig into our conversation variable kind of on the fly as we're going and see, okay, here's our system message that's in index zero. We can see all of our other questions with the user assistant response and what those responses are. If I do continue, we'll then be able to see this go further. Let's do this again, ask it another question. And so we go back, we're hitting the breakpoint again, and you can see that we now have 
that our messages list is growing and you kind of watch that and then certainly as well if you got to the point that you're hitting that 4096 token limit you would then start to see us prune off anything that's in this index one position so this first the first thing to go would be what is the airspeed velocity of the long lane and swallow if that still wasn't big enough or by the next question then we would be dropping this as the conversation history went more and more and more so sometimes it can be nice the debugger in visual studio can be a good way to visualize what's happening and kind of watch how your code works this is all i wanted to cover in this video i'll have some more content coming out soon thank you so much for following along again all this code will be available on github and available via the description if you do find these videos useful, please do like and subscribe. I do this on my own time and it really does help kind of motivate me to go and record another video. And that's all for now. Thank you so much.